So uh, in this video, what I want to do is introduce you to um, the truth table for the uh, pro uh, logical operators uh, that you learn about in 5.2. Um, I want to note that uh, this table that we're going to generate here in this video is basically the PowerPoint slide, the one and only PowerPoint slide for 5.2. It is also uh, something that is recreated in the, um, I believe it's the back or front cover of your book, um, one, of the, one of the covers of your book, I forget off the top of my head. Um, but you can find it there as well, um, as well as kind of spread throughout section 5.2. Um, I also want to say that this information is what you will be quizzed on for our, our five point quiz uh, coming up. All right, in other words, you'll have to memorize what we're going to come up with here. Um, I will tell you that. What you see here from tilde p across the p triple bar q, this line right here, this will be what I give you on the quiz. It will simply be that line. And then you'll have to generate this over here, what I'll call the pool of values, and then everything else that's going to go um, over here as well. Uh, so just you know, be aware of that. Um, so what we're looking at here is we're just trying to understand what these logical operators actually mean in essence. Uh, we looked at that to some extent in 5.1, of course. But what they mean for truth values, right? For when P or Q here happen to be some true or false statements. And so we're going to start on the, on the left here um, and work our way across. Um, and so what we have over here, this, uh, by the way, this pool of values I'll, I'll describe in more detail. Uh, you'll learn how to generate this for yourself in 5.3. But I think you can quickly recognize that what we have here are all the combinations of true and false for these two different letters. So we have true on both sides, or true for P and true for Q. We have P is true, Q is false. We have the uh, vice versa, P is false, Q is true. And then, of course, we have the combination where they're both false, right? So um, we have all of those represented here. And that will help us to think about all the possibilities for these statements across the way. So let's say here we consider the possibility that P is true, as we find here in this first row. What happens when P is true to the tilde? In other words, let's fill this out with a co concrete example to help this make more sense. If I told you that Everett is in the state of Washington, which of course is a true statement, right? Then to say it's not true that Everett is in the state of Washington would be false, right? So what we're seeing here is that when you have true under P, the tilde makes that true false. It flips it to the other value there. And that is also true here. Of course, in the second row, we know that P is true. So the tilde, again, would make that false. It's when we get down to the third row here, where we have P is false, P is false. Now, what happens when P is some false statement? So let's say I told you Portland is in the state of Washington. Now, that statement is false. So then if I were to add the tilde and say, it's not the case that Portland is in the state of Washington, you would say that I have just said something that is true. Okay. And then finally here we have P is false again. The tilde makes it true. So I'm going to illustrate uh, the thinking, we might say, behind all of these uh, logical operators here. Um, but I also want to emphasize just the pattern here that's going on which will help you, hopefully, to memorize this for our quiz on this material. So when p is true, the tilde is false. When p is false, the tilde is true. It just flips the value to the other one. I also want to do this. And of course, in 5.2, um, you learn about uh, main operators. Um, and in this case, in each of these statements, right, there is just one operator in every case. So the main operator is the only operator. but Having said that, I want to go ahead and circle uh, the main operator column. And this is something I'm really going to begin to emphasize in 5.3. But I want to circle the main operator column for, because this is sort of the values there for that tilde. And that's what we're interested in here. How do these logical operators uh, turn out? All right, so that's the tilde. When we get to the dot here, right, now we're going to start using Q. And so we can pull both of these values over here. So in other words, let's see what happens when P is true and Q is true, when they're both true statements. And of course, Hurley goes through this in the text, but you can, you can process this yourself, right? Let's say I told you that Everett is in the state of Washington and Seattle is in the state of Washington. If you were to hear that, 
Uh, and then I would ask you, that statement I just uttered, is that true or false? Of course, you would say, it's true. On the other hand, if I told you that Everett was in the state of Washington and Portland was in the state of Washington, you would say, no, that's not right. That's false. Likewise, if I told you here to go with a false statement, uh, if I told you that Portland is in the state of Washington and Seattle is in the state of Washington, Portland is in the state of Washington and Seattle is in the state of Washington, well, that's not, that's not the case. That's false. And then finally, if I told you Portland is in the state of Washington and Eugene is in the state of Washington, well, that's way off. It's false, right? So what we see here is that for the dot, you want to circle that main operator column. For the dot, the only way to make the dot true, right, the only way to make a conjunction and statement, a conjunction true is when both sides are true statements themselves. If you have any false at all, so to speak, feeding into the dot or involved in this conjunction, false, false, or false, the conjunction itself turns out to be false. So you can notice that pattern here. The easiest way to remember this, though, is just to recognize that um, the only way to make a dot true is when both sides are true. Or another way to put that same information is anytime you have false feeding into the dot, the dot is false. If you can remember either one of those sentences, you'll remember this uh, um, logical operator, the truth table for it. OK. So then we can move on to the wedge, right? Now we consider the same thing. Let's say I give you a true claim for P and another true claim for Q. Let's say I told you, in other words, Everett is in the state of Washington or Seattle is in the state of Washington. Now, you might think that's a little strange, right? Everett's in the state of Washington or Seattle's in the state of Washington. We know that they're both in the state of Washington. But the way we're going to understand the wedge, we're going to understand this is what's called the inclusive or, the inclusive wedge. In other words, meaning when both sides are true, the wedge itself is true, right? It wouldn't be false. Everett is in the state of Washington or Seattle's in the state of Washington. You, you, we might be able to say something stronger than that. We know we can. Uh, but it's still true that Everett is in the state of Washington or Seattle is in the state of Washington. This is confusing, I understand, mostly for me at least, uh, because of the context where I think of or, um, oftentimes perhaps in, a, in a going out to a restaurant, that kind of context, right? I'm going out to a restaurant, I'm going to order dinner, I get this entree, and then the uh, server asks me, would you like soup or salad with that, right? Well, the good news here is that you get to say yes, right? You get to say Yes, you want both, and it doesn't cost you any extra. Of course, in the restaurant industry, that's not the case. You, you, have, you want both, you have to pay extra, typically. But our wedge is the inclusive wedge, and so when you have both are true, the wedge itself is true. So having said that, what if I told you instead Everett is in the state of Washington or Portland is in the state of Washington? For whatever reason you couldn't remember, but you know Everett's in the state of Washington or it's Portland. Well, yeah, that is true. Likewise, if you said Portland is in the state of Washington or Seattle is in the state of Washington, you, you just couldn't remember, well, you're true, right? You're, you're, you're accurate. Portland or Seattle is in the state of Washington because Seattle is in the state of Washington. Finally, if I were to tell you Portland is in the state of Washington or Eugene is in the state of Washington, well, I'm sorry, but neither one is in the state of Washington. And so, in fact, that would be how we make the wedge false. So once again, we circle our main operator column. And what we're going to notice here, and this is the really important part for memorizing this for the quiz, is that uh, the wedge, as you can see, is always true except when they're both false. So if you can just remember that, you will remember how the truth table for the wedge works. The wedge is always true, except when both sides feeding into it are false. All right. Or in other words, another way to put that is, anytime you have any true feeding into the wedge, the wedge will be true. That's another way to think about this. OK. So 
finally, we come to the horseshoe, right? And this one, we're going to have to get away from the whole Everett and Seattle uh, examples. Um, but Hurley has a good example in your text, OK? Um, Hurley asks you to think of uh, the antecedent here, right, the P letter, as um, if you get an A on the final exam, so P here actually stands for getting an A on the final exam. And consider this claim. If you get an A on the final exam, then you will get an A in the course. Your, in your instructor, he suggests, might say this. If you get an A on the final exam, then you get an A in the course. Now, please note, I wouldn't say that. That's not my policy. But we could imagine it as, as some instructor's policy. OK, so what do we do with that information? Let's say I have that policy, which I don't, but let's say I did. And let's say you got an A on the final exam. And you look up your grade at the end of the quarter, and you end up with an A in the course. What would you say about my original statement? I think you would say that I had told you the truth, in other words, right? On the other hand, if it turned out that you got an A on the final exam, you knew this, you got an A on the final exam, but then you look up your grade, you know, anticipating good news at the end of the quarter, but oops, you wouldn't get an F, hopefully, but you wouldn't, let's say you, you didn't get an A, let's say you got a B. What would you think about my statement initially? You would, I think, come back to me and say, wait a minute, you lied, right? You said, if I get an A on the final exam, which I did, I would get an A for the course, which I didn't. Then that would prove me to be a liar. That would mean the statement was false. Continuing here, let's say you didn't get an A on the, on the final exam, right? Let's say you got some other grade. And then you look up your grade afterward, though, and it turns out you get an A in the course. Let's say that happened. Well, we, we know what would really happen after that, right? You wouldn't say anything. You'd be happy about it. But it wouldn't be like you have to hide any information. If you didn't get an A for the uh, last exam, but you still got an A for the course, I didn't lie to you, right? It may have been that you earned that A in the course in some other way, right? You already had enough points or whatever the case might have been. But you wouldn't say, I lied to you. I haven't violated that principle. If you didn't get an A for the last exam, the final exam, and yet you get an A for the course. Finally, what if you didn't get an A for the final exam, and you also didn't get, get an A in the course? OK, well, nothing particularly surprising about that. Certainly, you wouldn't feel like I had lied to you, and so uh, you would get this. So I want to just emphasize this. Um, among all of these logical operators here, the horseshoe is the hardest one to memorize. Okay, um, And that is because the only way to make the horseshoe false is to have true on the left false on the right. And that's the key to memorizing this. How do you make the horseshoe false? True on the left, false on the right. That's the only combination that will give you false. Every other combination, the horseshoe, turns out to be true. So if you can just try and wrap your mind around that, that will, I think, help you out. And I do want to emphasize before I end this video, and then we'll talk about the triple bar, is that you know I'm asking you to memorize these truth tables, not because you don't get a note sheet on the exam on this material. You certainly do. And I would certainly uh, encourage you to put this information on your note sheet. But if you have this information memorized, you will do much better on the next exam. Um, because you're not going to have to be looking up the answer on every problem. That's one. And secondly, sometimes you might be reading across right, on, on your note sheet. And let's say you get halfway across, and you sneeze, and your finger jumps. right? And now you thought the answer was, it was, the answer was supposed to be false, but now your finger's pointing at true, and you've just gotten the wrong answer now for whatever you're working on. So it's much better to have this memorized for a variety of reasons than simply to write it on your note sheet and only rely on that.